here in InDesign 2024. I think they have made a couple of changes, um, which makes it much easier to now set up the drop caps, which is these big letters in the beginning of any paragraph. And I think that's the most important thing to know. They are called drop caps. Um, just in case, if you don't have the same setup as I have here in my InDesign, um, I usually go up to Window and then up here you have Workspace and there's a couple of different options and sometimes you accidentally you press some kind of a button or some shortcut that's assigned to it and you know your setup is changing and that's when I toggle around and I play around with these um, settings as well. Some people prefer to use Essential Classics or Essentials as well um, that have you know that big sidebar on on the right hand side of your screen i really like to use advanced again i think they've changed a couple of things um i feel like it used to be different but i really like having all the options up here on the top um so now i've copied in um a piece of text a lot of ipsum text and just by the way if you press w um that's when you can change between the nice clean view of your um, sheets or pages that you're using and the one that will show you all the little outlines and guidelines and borders and margins and whatnot. So for text, um, yeah by the way just double click on the bottom so it shortens that text field. Um, so yeah you just go in here um, and you will want to navigate to the paragraph window. In case it doesn't show up on the right hand side here already, which I have, again you can switch around with the workspaces or if you scroll down to type and tables you will have the paragraph option here which is on a Mac um, what would that be option command and T it's a bit of a mouthful to remember so I usually just toggle down here in case I can't find it immediately and that little window thingy will pop up and now it's actually quite easy so now we have here on the bottom if you hover on it it says drop cap number of lines and on the right hand side these couple of um, items it says drop cap one or more characters so normally or traditionally we'll just have that first um, letter and we can actually select our entire text and we say okay um, we we'll want to have the first letter so the right hand side will um, say assign a one to that and then how many lines does it actually have to be and of course you can play around with this, um, like you can assign it visually as well. Think about, you know, what looks what looks nice for your entire text, what's actually um, feasible in terms of the layout that you have available. And you can play around with it as well. As you can see, I've done a, I had a slightly different um, setup up here. Um, we can adjust that so they are all the same. Um, most of the time, yeah, you would only have that in the beginning of a... Um, paragraph and I think if you go if you enter some new text whatever that is um, it will continue with those settings so you can just select these and you can remove um, the drop caps by just lowering these numbers again and they will be um, gone because you don't need them all the time so it's super super easy with these settings um, and one thing that's just um, catching my eye as well you can see it is hyphenating some of the words at the end of my um, send of the lines. I always go Command A, select everything, and I tick off that box here which says hyphenate, so it does not happen. I want to be either very much in control of how or when words are hyphenated at the end of a line, um, if at all. I'm not quite sure if that is a setting from my um, German settings on my laptop because we do hyphenate much more than in English, um, but nonetheless, yeah. And another thing that I just saw before, um, let me show you again, we select all of it. Let's assume in our paragraph we have, um, oh, I've got different settings now, but I can show you with one of those paragraphs. There we go. Let's assume I have a bit more spacing. And now we have the issue of text, um, of too much text in that text box. So down here on the bottom of the page, you will have a little indicator that shows you if everything is done properly in your document. And now we have one error. 
and a red um, a red like traffic light thingy. So if you double click on that one arrow thingy, this info box will show up and it'll show you there's an issue with text on page number one. There is always a text in page one within the text frame and you can actually just double click. So that's very helpful if you have a, a document with multiple pages. Um, you just double click on here and it will automatically navigate to the page and to the element where an error occurs and we can also see down here we'll have a little plus sign um, which means there's this overflow text now we could either um, have that link to a new text box and i will show you in another video at some point um, how to do that if you need some instructions on this as well but given that within our page we still have some space um, we can just increase the text box um, but what I do prefer is actually just double click onto that little um, rectangle at the bottom of the text box. Once that double arrow thingy occurs, you just double click onto it and the text box will automatically expand to fit the entire text in it. So now you see as well on the bottoms we have a, a green traffic light now, no errors. That is perfect. This um, kind of um, error... Um, notification um, tab will flag anything of like you know these overflow text it will flag if you have an image placed within your document that is not properly linked to its source all these kind of things that could um, cause an issue when you are exporting your file into PDF and make it available for people to read and watch so yeah before exporting I always keep an eye on that little icon in the bottom but yeah most importantly this is how you do drop caps in the most easiest way without having to fidget around with different um, font sizes and everything. Yeah, I hope this was helpful. Thank you.